Hey guys, it's Coach Bird here. We're going to talk about the scientific method today. Um, what is the scientific method? The scientific method is a term used to describe a set of steps that are used to investigate a natural occurrence. We do this every day when you think about a question, when you figure out what you need to wear for school today, you, you have a problem, you think about what you need to wear, you go to your closet or your dirty clothes hamper and you find what is acceptable to wear to school today and you put it on and you've solved your problem. The scientific method, here we talk about a problem, we make our observations about a problem or a question, research and find information about your topic of interest. For example, Bart Simpson, he wanted to find a new type of water balloon that would fly farther. So what could he use? His problem is he wants a new water balloon. So now we've got to figure out what to do. So his hypothesis. We're going to formulate a hypothesis about your question. Remember, a hypothesis is an educated guess of what you think will happen. But guys, it has to be testable. Um, so example for Bart is Bart decided that if he uses jello filled water balloons, they will travel, travel farther when thrown than regular water balloons filled with water. So he's going to test jello filled water balloons versus water filled water balloons. Remember a hypothesis is something you should be able to test. So can you come up with a hypothesis? Think of anything that you might want to be able to test. Write down your hypothesis in your notes and we'll discuss this in class tomorrow. Hint, hint, that's something you need to do. So the next step in the scientific method is your experimentation. This is the part that everybody enjoys doing. So keep in mind the following terms. We're going to talk about independent variable, dependent variable, and your control. Independent variable is the variable um, that you control, or often referred to as the manipulated variable. So independent and manipulated variable mean the same thing. It just depends on what term is um, basically going to be used that day. For the most part, I use independent variable, but that's not necessarily meaning that on the state test they won't use manipulated variable. So remember, remember that the independent variable is what you control, it is what you change about that experiment. The dependent variable is the variable that changes due to the independent variable. So basically, it's kind of like what you're measuring. If we change something in the, deep, or the independent variable, we have to know if that worked or not, and that's how we measure it. So the measuring portion is the dependent variable. And then you have your control. The control is what stays the same. I like to think of it as the norm. It is what normally happens. Um, you will use this to compare uh, your independent variable to. So we're going to know if the water balloon versus the jello balloon. So think about which one is your independent variable, how do they know that it worked or didn't work, and what is your control. So Bart Simpson is testing to see if jello filled water balloons will fly farther than water filled water balloons. What would his independent variable be? What will his dependent variable be? And what is his control? So take some time to think about this. If you need to press pause, go ahead and press pause. Think about it. You don't have to write anything down. Good. All right, so Bart is testing to see if jello filled water balloons will fly farther than water filled water balloons. I asked you just a second ago, what would his independent variable be? Remember, the independent variable is what he is changing or what he is testing. He is going to test jello filled water balloons. So that is his independent variable because he wants to see if they fly farther than water-filled water balloons. So then what is his dependent variable? What is he measuring? Well, he's going to measure how far they fly. And hopefully, remember, we're going to be measuring in meters because remember, in science, we're in the metric system. And then his control is, what's the norm? Well, a normal water balloon is filled with water. So our control is the water-filled water balloon. This is the norm he will compare his results to. So his independent variable is what he is testing, the jello filled water balloon. The dependent variable is how far they will fly, it's what he is measuring. And the control is the water filled water balloon because it is the norm. Okay, remember there is, in science, you have to use the same things equally. So in each balloon, 
it needs to be filled with the same amount of liquid. We don't want to put five grams of jello in the jello filled water balloon, but only two grams of water in the water filled water balloon because they're not going to fly equally or they don't have the same mass. So each balloon needs to be filled with the same amount of liquid and he needs to use the same type of water balloon for each of the jello filled water balloons and the water filled water balloon. Say that five times fast. Okay, so remember, same amount of liquid, same type of water balloon. We want to use the water balloons from the same package. We don't want to use the long skinny ones for the jello and the short round ones for the water because they're not going to, to fly the same. So Bart needs the same type of balloons filled with one cup of water for the control and one cup of jello for the independent variable. Now let's move on to the collecting the data. We have two different types of data. We have quantitative and qualitative. So as you're performing your experiment, you will need to be collecting data, which is generally around step five of the scientific method, but I don't really give numbers to them. So there are two main types of data. We have the quantitative data, which is your numerical data. Think numbers, think quantity, quantos. Qualitative data is your descriptive data. Think quality. So if I wanted to know the temperature in degrees outside, you would give me quantitative data. It is 97 degrees. That is numbers, so therefore it's quantitative. If you just tell me that it's hot, that's a description that is qualitative. So here's an example of BART's data table. We have trial one, trial two, trial three, and the average. You have a, call, or a, a row for jello filled water balloon, in a row for water-filled balloon. Trial 1, 10 meters to 9 meters. Trial 2, 12 meters to 10 meters. Trial 3, 15 meters to 9 meters. And then they averaged them out. So the average distance the jello-filled balloon went was 12.3 meters. The average distance the water balloon went was 9.3 meters. After you've collected your data, we will then analyze the data. And I'm not going to have you do a lot of lab, formal lab reports throughout um, biology, but you will be asked to do a few and where you're going to have to need to know how to analyze your data. Remember, when you analyze your data, you're writing a summary of your quantitative data or qualitative data in a paragraph form. You're not giving me a summary of the experiment, just of your data. So BART's analysis would be during the trials, the jello filled water balloon traveled on average for three trials, 12.3 meters, while the water-filled water balloon only traveled 9.3 meters. So that would be an example of an analysis. And then finally comes the conclusion where you will then sum up your experiment referring back to your hypothesis. So you're going to write a paragraph reflecting on your hypothesis, um, what it's supported by the data or refuted by the data, what could have gone wrong, or what could you have done differently next time? So you would restate your hypothesis and then explain was your hypothesis supported? And if it was, give data to say why. And if, or if your hypothesis was not um, supported, it was refuted, then you would also explain what could have happened. Was there human error, which is always a possibility. Don't ever leave out human error because sometimes we just read the meter stick wrong. Uh, or the graduated cylinder or any other, I mean, we may have completely skipped a step in our experimentation that we forgot about. Um, so remember, always think about what could have gone wrong, what could you do differently next time you go to do this experiment. So Bart's conclusion. The hypothesis that jello-filled water balloons will travel farther than regular water balloons was supported by the data collected during the experiment. There is always room for human error so to better the experiment, next time add, adding more trials would increase the data pool, giving more information to use. All right, so your summary. Remember to observe and research, the, then formulate a hypothesis that can be tested through an experiment. So we always start with our observation, and we have to formulate a hypothesis that can be tested. And sometimes we may need to do a little research to be able to formulate that hypothesis. When setting up your experiment, think about the control, independent and dependent variables. Remember, independent variable is what I can change, the dependent variable is what we will measure, and the control is the norm. 
Remember that each, the independent and the control need to be equal. Don't forget to collect your data and then summarize it. Finally, in the conclusion, make sure you refer back to your hypothesis. Remember that it's okay if your hypothesis was proven incorrect. Don't ever change your data to fit your hypothesis. All right, thank you.